Hello everyone, my name is Dio Morales, host of the Gold Squadron Podcast, and we are bringing you the round of, it's actually not technically 32, because there's less than 32 people, but it's the easiest way to mark it, so uh, we're going to call it Top 32. Um, this is going to be a an exciting game, we were talking at dinner, we figured out that this matchup was happening, and uh, a lot of people said, Dion, you have to do it, you have to do it, there's going to be 14 ships on the table, uh, and I said, it sounds like a nightmare for me, but... Uh, we're gonna we're gonna make it happen. <laughs> Today I'm joined by. I am Devin Monkhouse uh, from the PTL, and this is a dream matchup. I love swarms, and uh, I can't wait to see how this goes. Yeah, I'm super excited. We're gonna move a couple things around so that we can uh, start getting ships marked off. You can see that there's a nice cluster of rocks here in the middle, and this might be the most you hear me talking this game because <laughs> my job is to make sure that all this stuff stays uh, stays straightened together. Um, yeah, good luck to me. So we'll, 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 we'll find out. So, Devin, take the wheel. Welcome to Dion and Devin in the morning, folks. We're here with an exciting match. we got 14 ships on the board. I'm excited. I love swarms. I am here to tell you that this is going to be an incredible match. I think uh, William Hagwood is not going to use Boba Fett efficiently at all. And there we go. What we've seen all weekend from Boba Fett, Bobby feats absolutely nothing. And Blair Bunky will, I think, at a key moment in this game, use Leia excellently to great effect to punk some scum stuff. Well, let's uh, let's let's talk about the format because somebody watching in the future might not be aware of what's going on, or this maybe they haven't watched. This is happening at the 2018. Coruscant Invitational. We said open a couple of times last year. It's not an open. You can't just walk in. You can't just show up. Well, I mean, we did. Dion. <laughs> but, I mean, like, we're not playing. We didn't right. get invited to play. We're scrubs. Everyone here. Speak for yourself. A hundred. Uh, ah. I am. I am. 100%. <laughs> Everyone here. A hundred out of the best players in the world. Now down to about 30 players in the be best uh, in the world. Went. These guys playing today went four, at least four and two yesterday. I'm unaware of William Hagwood's and Blair Bunky's records. I'm assuming they're four and twos. Dion, do you know? Uh, yeah, they're four and twos, I believe. Wunderbar. Uh, I'd be interesting to know what their losses are. Um, but the format is, if you bring a scum swarm, or if you bring a scum list, you have to bring Boba Fett crew. If you bring a rebel list, you have to bring Leia crew. And if you bring an imperialist, you can you have to bring the ruthlessness talent, um, and those upgrades are free. So you will notice that the math doesn't quite work out on either side. We've got uh, a 206 or a 203 point list, and that's because they're flying these crew that count as zero points. So I am definitely interested to see how this game comes out we're gonna have a very interesting matchup today and I think Blair's squad has an edge here uh, I, I'm, we didn't quite have the stream on early enough I don't I do recall seeing the placement of Boba Fett that was that lower uh, quad jumper backed up here in the bottom left uh, I think Blair's got a bit of an edge here in this game with the crack shots and Leia I think that's gonna give him both an edge in damage and dice modification, uh, specifically of his opponents. Um, at our, as, uh, he was using that expertly at range one in our previous when we had previously had him on stream, and uh, he used Leia twice to great effect in uh, in that game as well. And it seems like he's been leveraging her ability quite well all weekend to get himself here and to get into day two and onto our stream. Now this is about uh, the perfect amount of ships, I think. We've got seven on each side. Each one's a little interesting piece, an interesting plan to the puzzle. Um, now we have uh, Drea Renthal in the back here for William Hagwood. You can see that little support ship and you can see her turret pointing down board uh, towards our camera. And if there is an enemy ship in her arc, any of William's ships are going to be able to get a re-roll against it. Uh, Blair Bunky does not have a, a big support ship like that, giving out buffs and bonuses to the friends, uh, except for the Blue Squadron Scout, 
Uh, the Blue Squadron Scout does have Leia, but no real like AOE, area of effect buffing going on. Other than twice a game, he will be uh, popping that ability and K-turning all of his ships for free and getting actions and repositioning wonderfully. So we're seeing a big push here from Blair along the bottom of the board with the Blue Squadron Scout and two and three of his Talas. And uh, he's being joined by a fourth. So he's making a real play down here at the bottom, uh, which is a very, very interesting um, way of positioning his swarm. If you can sort of think of these as two storm fronts moving together, um, It'll be very interesting to see how and where they clash. As Swarm players, it looks like they're both aiming for the large, empty space in the middle of the board. Um, and there you see William Hagwood bringing up his second support ship, L337, an extremely cheap ship, uh, 24 points with the inclusion of Tobias Beckett. Um, we've off, Tobias Beckett is a, a, an odd upgrade to have, uh, very interesting, allows you to move an obstacle more common we've been seeing a tactical officer making that coordinate white for L337 mm -hmm. um, but she's also great at cheaper than a TIE fighter 22 points for coordinate so this is definitely going to be an interesting match Dion clicking away furiously yeah. <laughs> trying to get all of so, those numbers up on the board for you anybody who's watching right now just kind of give you guys the way Williams Williams side is set uh, labeled one through seven. You can see his quad jumpers. You got one, uh, one peg, two peg, three peg. If you look on the left side, underneath the overlay, you see the cards there. He has three quad jumpers. They're in that order, one, two, three, which are going to be labeled on our our overlay as five, six, and seven. Uh, total ships. Same thing happens with the uh, Z95s. You got one peg, two peg, so that's number three and four. Andrea and L3, L337 marked as two. Now I'm going to go work on Blair's. All righty then. Um, I think both of these swarms have a different philosophy. Blair's very aggressive, very aggro focused. He's going to try and like get in, do damage, hit damage, kill ships. Uh, William Hagwood's going to definitely going to be doing more of a positional game, moving ships around with the the quad jumpers, moving his own ships around with the quad jumpers, crashing in, trying to block Blair's ships, trying to deny them their actions because he does not have. Uh, easy ways to get area of effect rerolls or area or or focus tokens the, the way that William does with coordinate or uh, Drea's rerolls so certainly each player has come at leveraging their uh, ship number advantage differently and it's going to definitely uh, be interesting to see how they clash right um, and what Blair targets first is, I'm assuming uh, Blair is going to target both L337 and Drea in the initial engagement, hoping to get those uh, support ships off the board, and that will give him both a pilot skill advantage and a and bring William down to his level of you know dice modification ability. So hopefully, we're going to see a few more movements. There's the quad jumper. Just, uh, he's trying to parallel park next to the rock, and that's that's tough. Well, us, <laughs> us city folk, you know, sometimes it can be easy, but uh, the quad jumpers, he needs, he needs his practice. Um, one thing that Blair needs to be worrying about right now is with the advance of these quad jumpers around the big rocks, and that's certainly something we saw around six in our bubble match yesterday, is if you're not aware of or paying attention to you know, where a quad jumper is going to be next turn, where its range one is, how that little toot toot tug is going to affect you. Um, it can really sort of jumble you up and uh, cause problems. Uh, we saw Suntir fell on a uh, on a rock three turns in a row, and that's, that's bad for an ace. Uh, it's not so bad for a Z95, um, but, uh, you know... You uh, see William use that red barrel roll there. Red barrel roll. I mean, that's our second Z95 barrel roll, Dion. Woohoo! I mean, it's, it's super good. It's fun. And we can see William really spread out, bring the engagement in, have a really 
throwing a broad net with his two support ships floating around in back there, which is gonna, which is a really great positioning for him. Uh, setting up the tugboats uh, to for the next turn to attempt to put start putting some of those Z95s onto rocks, um, and certainly even though rocks the rocks are small, uh, the barrels still have enough play that you know Blair's going to end up at least a few times with uh, with Z95s on rocks, and so William's going to have to or is planning on negating some of Blair's aggression mm -hmm. with his. Um, big dice that he's throwing with the crack shots with his EPT advantage by denying him some Target shots lock there. by placing uh, those ships on rocks. So again, my name is Devin Monkhouse from the PTL. I usually commentate on VTTV Live and we've been invited here today with Dion from the Gold Squadron Podcast. Yep. And uh, I'm here are, guys, I promise. <laughs> we are bringing you a beautiful monster game of 14 ships. I'm in love, Dion. And he is, again, clicking away furiously, working to get things done. And uh, Blair, I think William Haywood is on your podcast, mm -hmm. uh, the Gold Squadron podcast. And here we have Blair Bunky, who is from the Scum and Villainy podcast. Uh, unfortunately, I hate to say it, I am I'm cheating on you, Dion. I am also a patron of the Scum and Villainy <laughs> podcast. It's it's fine. <laughs> I, for right. I forgive you. There's enough money in the world to go around. That's right. Or as we Canadians call it here. Uh, in America, freedom units. Mm -hmm. There's enough uh, freedom units to go around. And uh, this is a, a very interesting from Blair. He's Blair's keeping his ships mostly together, which I like. It's He's going to be able to, you know, when you're flying a swarm like this and uh, or when you're combating a swarm, right, you need to look at, especially a spread out swarm the way William has, you need to look at it and say, what is the weakest part of this net that he is drawing? And Blair has clearly chosen or is just forcing what he believes the weakest part to be is those two quad jumpers in front of him. And he's just putting his five ships versus maybe two ships, right? You take your most powerful things and you point it at part of the swarm, mm -hmm. especially when they go wide. And you point it at the weakest part, you kill the weakest part, and then you move off. And then as the swarm has to like reconstitute itself, bring itself around, bring those arcs around it, it's doing those re that repositioning, you know, you try and swing around and, and take the attacks of opportunity and attack another weak part of the swarm, right? You never, you can see the kill box, we keep talking about kill boxes, but the range two band in front of William Haywood's swarm right now is completely devoid of ships. And that is by intention from Blair. He could have gone quickly and he did not. Uh, we're going to have shots this turn. Uh, I'm Dion almost done. I'm so gonna close. Go, Dion's going to go mad, keeping it up. Um, okay, we got we got our initial so now markers out there. Drea Renthal, range three, on number six there, Dion. On number six. Uh, he's shooting number six. Um, these boys have been on stream before. Hopefully they keep remembering to point at the ship so that we know who they're shooting at. Again, we, apologies for our Midwestern earthquakes that the... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so the uh, the tripod has to be on the table, and uh, we're not going to have any John Madden on the screen for this one. There's too much. There's too much clicking to do. Too much clicking so, to do. Uh, That's fair. We'll we'll see if we can do it in I'll between. Mi I'll miss my Madden pens. <laughs> but, uh, okay, so the found issue number one. We are. Oh, there we go. There we go. Natty's fine. Two crits, safe. Okay, perfect. I mean, that's the engagement that Blair wanted. I mean. The, when you're running a swarm like this, you're running a, a low agility swarm, you just need to stop, especially in 2.0 where you have half damage on everything, you just need right. to negate as much damage as possible. All right, here we go. This is uh, Z95, red 2 versus blue 6. Two hits, three evades, safe. I same. Looks like same target. No, it's... Uh, red oh, 2 yeah. on the blue 6. Okay. Spends a focus for 2. He's going to be taking two on blue six. Blair really wants to get something off the board this round. That's one hit. Is he going to spend the focus? Spend the focus. He's, de he's debating. He knows he has some shots coming back in. Do it. <laughs> and got it. He could have forced the tugboat there to spend its focus. That would have been good for him. 
And now we got red five reaching, might have range to blue four. Looks like, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Is your hand on, did you hit the space bar? Nope. One second, everybody. There you go. So it looks like they just uh, measure the range there. Okay. So we have. All right. So it looks like it was, was in range, spending two. He takes it. And there, yeah, there's no focus there. So that's the blue four. That's taken, the guy that barrel rolled. Taken two. Taken two. And it looks like red one. I imagine he's going to shoot Drea. Yep, he's going to be reaching for that other Z95. Looks like it's not in trekking range. Drea does have it. Drea, who I believe spent her focus. Yes, on the attack. Just straightening out there. And uh, to do no damage, though. Correct. I'm Here you go. Hit, so crit. hit crit. Just roll natties. And safe. Was that? I think she's taking one. Nope, that was two of eights. Okay. Uh, All right, so Williams uh, attacks here. Here comes L337. L337. No shot. And quad jumper going into look like six. red six. And <laughs> added add an extra die in there. And he, it's going to be taken two. He rolled an attack die as a. Uh, <laughs> yes. So he's spending his focus. Yep. Taking one, I believe. Yeah. Nope. Reroll from Drea, spends the focus, evaded. There we go, into the same one. Blue three into red six. Two blanks, Drea reroll. One crit. Evaded. Safe. Looks like range to be obstructed there, Dion. Mm -hmm. Deciding to probably go at red one. How's it going? And it's going into red one, spends a focus for two. It and it. got it. I think Blair's having an ideal round here. He's avoiding a lot of damage. This is really great. You want Here's that mitigation? Here's blue four, checking range. Be going into the same target over here. Red one. Uh, I think it's actually into red five. Oh, they did decide that, that yep. range. It's range three obstructed. No rerolls there, and got it. Great. So neither uh, neither player was able to take a ship off the board this turn, but the fact that um, that Blair was able to take away more damage from William than William was able to get is definitely that to was, Blair's advantage. That was a not great. William one needed to put in a couple damage. Blair's Blair's sort of had the the dice and the mods there, or the the focuses left over from the attacks, and he was able mm -hmm. to. Um, really dampen the damage output from William Hagwood. And um, now, when we saw William on stream last time, I'm going to ask you, you've, you're mm -hmm. a, a rep partner of his. Yep. Where's he going to crash? All right. I, I will tell you in about five seconds. I'm just getting, nice. I'm getting ready for the next round. So Let's I would say this might be a, an actual one forward to victory moment. But those quad jumpers, this is their moment to shine. I'm expecting... Big, big moves from the quad jumpers. I'm expecting them to come in, put Z95s on rocks, and we're going to see some damage and some you know, attack mitigation from the tugboats. Toot, toot. We're yeah. Gonna... I mean, it's time for the tugboats to really, uh, really shine here. Mm -hmm. uh, again, guys, I'm doing all the marking for these, so I'm just trying to get it myself into an ideal situation. A uh, little light on the commentary for me today. I do want to say before, uh, before I forget, before we go too far, thank you to our round sponsor, Curl Paw Creatives. Use our exclusive coupon code Coruscant18 to um, get 15% off of anything from their store that's X-Wing related. And there are no minimum orders there, so get whatever you need now. Um, the, it does expire Monday morning, so go ahead and uh, get it. Get it now, now, now. Okay, let's go ahead I'm and excited. do a little test. Yeah. 
It's no, up. Not yet. That's okay. You said we we said no Madden this round because uh, yeah, there's just a lot going on. Yeah, yep. don't worry about it. It's too much. <laughs> One too many things. I didn't have time to get ready. And they only gave us 30 minutes to get there, in here. There's been some chatter yep. about like how quick the rounds are going to be. Yeah, oh, I've flown a lot of swarms. Look, there, you know what these guys. I'm gonna tell you, these guys are moving very fast for like. For 14 ships on the table, these rounds have gone faster than some of the games we were watching yesterday when there was only four to five ships on the table. Because you got nothing to think about. You know where your ships are going. There you go. You got to make one decision for one and five. You got to make one decision for, you know, two, three, four, six, seven. Mm-hmm. Right. Now maybe you're gonna mess that up a little. Not mess it up a little. But you're gonna like. Well, I think this this is the one or two ships is gonna do something a little different. This is the turn that really determines the game. Ooh, we got mm-hmm. really quiet in here all of a sudden. Oh, got this very is quiet. this is the turn that's going to We're determine. It's <laughs> gonna really determine how this game swings. It's going to be very uh, dice variance heavy, and it'll determine really who's going to be able to run away with this game. Yeah. Um, it's 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 really just gonna come down to how how much damage can I do versus uh, versus how much can I mitigate? Do I spend my focuses here? Do I take the risk? Right? You, you have to make those those decisions. Uh, William, I think, needs to be more defensive with no. his focus. I think he needs to be very... Oh, with his focuses. With his yeah. focuses. Yeah. With his focuses, he needs to be defensive because he does have the offense of Drea. Yeah. That you have some mods. So you do have the re-roll. I agree. Essentially, I agree. Uh, you, you just... You go all in on defense. You spend it every time you need to. And, and you got to try to punish Blair for it. I want to see those quad jumpers be super yeah. aggressive. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right. Um, the three the three bank isn't green, but a three a three forward here from number six. Mm-hmm. Right? I believe that's the fastest that the quad jumper can go. Gets uh, the U-wing in its bullseye arc for a tractor beam on the U-wing. Which, okay. And repositioning that might be... Um, boosting it forwards, sort of getting it out of the fight might be a very interesting uh, decision. But also, I'm suspecting um, a stop and a 90-degree rotate from the U-wing. Yeah, so you, you, if, if you move that U-wing forward, you might just be flanking yourself with the U-wing. You just put, mm-hmm. You're putting it out of your arcs and, where, and turning it to the side if Blair did do that stop. Where a three-bank and a tractor beam on number two. Yep, make him roll over it twice. Throws it on a rock. A three forward is green on the quad jumper, so yep. seven coming forward can put number six onto a rock. Mm-hmm. And both of those ships can probably, will probably have to go over that rock twice. Yeah. So two and six, watch for the quad jumper there. Mm-hmm. Watch for the quaddy. And I think um, if if the rock can do some work, you know, do, do at least one damage, mm-hmm. you take away some actions from Blair, you lower his action efficiency. Um, but of course, Blair does have the crack shots. So, mm. um, depending on how those line up this turn, that's really gonna gonna make a difference here. And when we were seeing him on stream before and, and other games today, he was really leveraging that at range yep. one. Right? That's where the crack shot shines uh, at range one, where you can really both up your damage count and lower their evade count, and uh, it takes up. You're, you're much more likely to be in the bullseye arc at range one. Yeah. <laughs> Um, somebody's asking, can you tractor a ship off the mat? You, you cannot. You cannot. You cannot. You cannot maneuver a ship off the mat. Well, you can maneuver it. It cannot move off the map. I right. think it's probably, probably yeah. right? Is that the word that it would be? Everything is a maneuver, a boost, barrel roll, everything. But if you plan a, if you plan on your dial, it going off the board, it goes off the board. Right. But you can't boost yourself off the board. You can't be tractor beamed off the board. You can't barrel roll off the board. Right. You can slam off the board. Or did they change yes. that? That might have been changed. No, uh, I don't know. We haven't seen a lot. We, we <laughs> only, we've only had one slam ship. Right. Um, and that was uh, Nathan Ides Miranda, and he didn't get close to the board. There you go. All this right. ain't no attack wing. <laughs> so uh, this is going to be this is going to be a round of tons of dice. Mm-hmm. So we're going to do our best to keep track of it. We do have some people watching the game for us going to try to help us out. And, um, yeah, super excited. We're not into the crits yet. Once we get into the crits, uh, it'll certainly be interesting. Um, now, William does have the an opportunity here, or he does have an advantage in that. He has a lot of pilot skill one ships. He's going to be moving first. He's going to be getting actions. He's going to be blocking. Yep. He's going to be... Here we uh, go. Here we go. Uh, let's, oh. let's let's see what happens it's here. the three forward. First con... Yep, three forward. It's going to be reaching. No, I think... I, I think Moving six first might have been uh, the ideal move there, but let's see. 
Well, let's let's not doubt till we actually see what happens. Yeah. So he's gonna oh, be he's choosing the barrel. He wants to get in the way. He wants to get in the way. Yep. He wants to start blocking those ships up. And again, that's what L337 is for to mitigate. He can then move and then coordinate. He can still coordinate it. Yep. Yeah. All right, three forward from this one. I'm hoping to see a let's, tractor let's beam. See what the, let's see what the action is. He's There, he's slamming down the tractor beam. On to number two. Number two. Away oh. it goes. So we'll see it roll on to the asteroid. And I imagine Blair is, is definitely going to be expecting this, right? He, he knows that this is going to be coming. We'll see how he planned for it in his maneuvers. Rolls for the die. And no, we don't know if they've popped there. Leia or not this round. We'll find out. Okay. Someone where Leia, the Leia card is on it's the It's all side. the way on the top. So Leia does appear to be spent. Those look red to you? I'm colorblind. Yes, I think. Probably. It's kind of small from my from uh, my, my screen right Up now. Here. Yeah, hold, hold on. I, I, gotta keep, I can't look. I know. I know. I know. Yeah, it does look red. Yeah. So Leia may have been popped this round. Uh, in that case, I would expect a K turn from number two, a 90 degree turn from from uh, the U-Wing. Um, All right, three, f uh, one forward from the blue three. Does a focus action. Mm -hmm. Here comes the next ship. So this almost was a one forward to victory. We're seeing very mm -hmm. conservative moves from the top of the swarm. The bottom of the swarm was the, the fast quad jumpers that we yeah. didn't expect. So there is. He's getting the quad jumper out of the way. First K turn. First of the day. K turn. And that's gonna be a that's gonna be a rough position for William. There. That is that is the fact that he's gonna be able to, um, you know, drop that focus there. I want to remind everybody that this format allows for the um, the faction upgrade that was selected to be free. So the the score the squads are over two hundred points. So Bobby feeds be. Boba Fett is yeah. free and Leia and Leia is free. Is free. Yeah. And well, Boba Fett, I have not. I really, we've got some target lock there. Really fun X-wing thinkers here today, and uh, I really wish that we'd seen uh, some interesting uses of Boba Fett. Maybe Morallo, um maybe on a bigger ship than a quad jumper, and we have just not seen All anything right, so like that. This is Red Two going through the rock again. It's going to be blocked up. Not have any shots. All right, uh, a debris, a rock got picked up. Yep. I don't think that's where it was, but. That's okay. I'm surprised that that was not a, a K turn in this instance. Um, that's an interesting location for that ship. Uh, it certainly well, it can definitely K turn next turn and, and and start creating a net for Blair and come back around. Very true. So here's that's red two. And they're checking this the distance between those two rolls a crit. That's going to be um, one damage onto number two. Number two. I. Okay. Okay, here's red six, one banking. So Looks like one of these quad jumpers are going to be eating it. I believe all... Drops a focus there. All the quad jumpers are in trouble this round. So both uh, two and th red two and red three had done maneuvers that they, no matter what happened, they would be okay if tractor beam. Mm -hmm. you know, we've got some very fast movement here from one and five. And, uh, oh, no, never mind. Five's going nice and slow. Nice and slow. He's keep it, keeping a wide net. Yeah, he's building a variety of ranges and uh, attacks um, that keep his ships sort of, if uh, one had bumped there, then five would have been fine with the, the three and the one. Uh, L337... Is coordinating. There's the coordinate. He's going to reach. He gets to check his options first. So here he can coordinate the barrel rolled. Well, let's see. Let's see what he does. To what? Are, what is his choice? Tractor beam. Choose the tractor beam to quad jumper number seven. Quad jumper seven's tractor beaming six onto the rock. Yep. So that's going to be taking away a shot. Yep. Fantastic move. Mm -hmm. I didn't even consider that, but that is definitely a thing that uh, we can do. Uh, that is great. Denying a shot, forcing six over the rolls rock it, and that's going to be a focus. So no, uh, no dice there. Now, unfortunately, he still does have a defensive token, but now has one less defense die due to the tractor beam meeting. And just not being able to shoot is huge, absolutely huge for William. Right. All right. So looking at whether or not that three bank's going to fit. 
you know, start proxying the ships. And it's it's going to be close. So they're going to. It, it's really dependent on the angle, whether uh, yeah. or not that fits. Yeah. Now the corset came with these nice little ship marker tokens, that no one seems to be using. Well, old habits die hard. Well, here at the PTL, we bought. Well, we're not. We're not here at the PTL. We bought. We're, we're, nice we're, in, we're in America, markers. sir. We're in America. Thank you. you use your freedom <laughs> templates. <laughs> All righty. So Drea a bump there from Drea. She's going to get to shoot number two. It still looks like. All right. So uh, we're backing them up. Yeah. We're going to lift. There you go. As long as we get that, uh, so, get that three bank down. Despite my ribbing, this is a very nice demonstration of how you can be extremely careful. Get the ships off and on the board, and uh, and you know the question is, does blue five fit with Drea in her position? It looks like it does. Yeah, the, you could you could see that Blair Bunky was pre measuring pre measuring with his one forward to make sure that the base did fit there between uh, blue five, red two, and red one, um, and so there we have Drea Renthal bumping into red one. Um, I th it looks like. Red six is probably going to eat a lot of damage this round. Um, and we've got a few ships left to go. I think we have red seven. Yep. Oh, no, red no, seven. No, is a U-wing. So what, did it just stop? So, uh, but yeah, okay. Le Leia dropped the target lock. Right, of course. This is a very interesting. So Drea starting to target here, checking range to uh, red five. Interesting. Here we go. Nothing. Interesting. Ability doesn't work on herself. No. I did All right, U wing going into blue seven. Target lock. Got the re rolls. That's two hits and a crit. And got one, so one crit going through. Oh, sorry, one hit crit. Hit crit going, going through into seven. blue seven. And hit. the crit is off screen. A direct hit. Yep. So taking three total into blue this was seven. A, a very conservative engagement by both of these players, and I think we're going to see a drawn out. Um, so here's the attack: two yeah. hits and an eyeball. Blair thinking about how he's going to spend it. Yep. Did you Got catch to. where this attack was? Nope. Okay. They just started rolling dice. Most likely, it's probably red three into blue seven. Richard. Yeah, I know. But who's attacking who? I, I know, but like, which ship is attacking which ship? That's fine. We'll, we'll figure it out. We got it. All right. So this is, uh, he's trying to make a decision. You, you think it's red three. Yep. That sounds about right. That's a, that's a good shot to take. I guess, I guess the question is, what is... What's the, the hold up? What's the, all right, so he's debating whether to spend the one focus for the one. Spent it, evaded. Got it. It was red three. Yep. Is it in the bullseye arc? Yep. Solid question, and it looks like yes. Well, it looks like it might be no. Is it no? Just outside. Nope. Spends it, crack shot, takes the damage. Okay, so that's one damage on two, seven. Yeah. So that's that left at one health there. But I don't think he has uh, only red five of the shot on him. Yep, that's it. So he's going to live one more turn, be able to do some more uh, more some more some havoc with that tractor beam. Red two shooting at blue four. One hit. Waiting for the response. Got it. So I said, this seems like a very conservative... Uh, both players very 
hesitant to come into this engagement. I think we're going to have a very long engagement together that will be. All right, here we go. Here we go. Red one into blue three. Sounds like a good shot for Blair to take. He needs blue three to spend his focus to help save red six. Yep. Red one into blue three. All right, so he's going into blue three. That he's. Three hits, got two it. Evades. Takes one yeah. on the blue three. That's just a shield. Yeah. He's able to keep his focus. And now we're gonna see who's, who's left. So here's uh, red five activating. Looks like he has. Range two to Drea and blue three. He's yep. shooting blue three. He's trying to get rid of that focus token. Mm -hmm. There you go, red five, two hits. Uh, I see one die, one evade. One evade. One shield. One shield and a card. Oh. Okay. Oh. So red four on blue three. Two hits. He's going to get him off the board. That's it. He's off. William flipping the cards. First catch of the day. That's right. All right, nothing on that first uh, first attack. That was L337. Yep. Unmodded, it's rough with her, <coughs> especially mm -hmm. when you're coordinating, giving everyone else actions. All right, so looks like quad jumper, a blue six into red six, range one. Drea reroll, just one crit. He only has one die to respond. He threw one too many dice. He's tractor beamed. Looks like blue seven on red six. Reroll. Reroll some not coming through for him. Evade. Correct him out this time. <laughs> and I want to remind everybody who's watching at home that for games like this, we are not allowed to say anything. Uh, we literally. Uh, less than spectators, you can go ahead and look at the new tournament rules when they talk about streaming and stuff like that. We're not allowed to uh, to touch anything. It's everyone like it's, makes mistakes. That's how the game. Uh, that's played. that's right. It happens. So there are people looking at the table. If they see if they see it, then uh, they can so talk to a judge. Blue five. So two crits. Uh, three, and that's off the table. Red three. Two crits. Bam bam. We're gonna mill. Yeah, he's just milling the deck. Doesn't really matter what they are. Well, Z for a Z, but Blair's uh, got more damage into William, I think, in general. Okay, so okay, just asking some questions, seeing what what is what. So this is. We still have shields on three when it the, it just died. All right. Oh, focus spend for it three. for three. That's uh, blue four attacking, I believe, red two. No, red uh, one. Red one. Yeah. So he took. All right, I think we're going to need one of our uh, one of our runners to go and just Look. make sure we have all the damage. Yep, we'll confirm here real quick. Could you could you see what the damage is on? Uh, Back to dials, folks. So we've got uh, someone go just to double check all that data, just to make sure we know what's what, what's hurt, mm -hmm. what's on fire. One shield. Okay, cool. So that's uh. Got it. Which one? Corrected. Uh, blue, red one only took one on that shot. Okay. Did red four take any damage? Do we know? You can see it here. It's hard with the flipping of the tokens now. Yeah. Looks like one's missing one. One, two. 
three, 35, four. Four, no, he's clean. Yeah, okay. He's clean. And uh, these guys pretty quick with the dials. We've seen, we're seeing about half the dials down on the board already. Yep. And uh, like I said, when you're flying a swarm like this, generally it's, your decisions are fairly simple and fairly easy. Well, I would, I would argue with you that not at this point. Not at this point because you're no longer in a, in a formation anymore. This is a scrum now. Right, but each ship, it has, the dials are so simple, right, that there's, there's a, a clear best move. And it's not like an ace where you're doing the, I know that you know that I know that you know that, you know, where I'm going, right? Uh -huh. With this, it's like, this you know, 95 needs to be in an efficient place, so you do an efficient move, right? Like, you, do, you can't get fancy with a swarm, right? The fanciness was last turn with Leia. Okay. Right? You can't prop Leia this turn, and William knows that. Blair knows that. Leia's at zero charges, or one charge, because she regen this round. She's regening this round. It's a mm -hmm. must. Yeah. It's a must, as is Force. Um, so, like, we're seeing, you start with the easy ships, right? Which they've all sort of done. And then you'll see the ships where they're having tougher decisions come in. Right. I don't. I don't. I really don't agree with you. I 100% okay. don't agree because this is both these players are high level swarm players, mm -hmm. and if the what what I think you're you're what you're not believing in is the the they know what is the most efficient, and the question right. that they have to ask themselves is, do I do the most efficient or I do something to try to counter their most efficient, and they have to play that game of the. The rabbit hole of do you know what I know? What you, <laughs> you know, so sure. so I think that we could see some unexpected moves here, and that's the kind of thing that could swing a game. Well, again, the the fact that the quad jumper blue seven lived, mm -hmm. right? He didn't really, Blair didn't really put he put a lot of damage into uh, blue four, took it off the board, right? But left blue six alive, like that's showing some of his. Um, targeting like he's like I can get the most shots on this ship I'm going to take it off the board but by leaving these two quad jumpers alive they're going to be able to come in mm -hmm. and mess with his formation and his positioning right again right? Mm -hmm. he's continuing to allow William to, to control a bit of movement in the game um, I mean I don't know you could be right uh, but certainly I well, think I, and again some of, I, I just think that it's not as simple as just do the best like I guess the, what I'm arguing is that the best move could be argued what is that for each ship right that, that's all that's all I, that's all I'm, I'm and, and we may see k-turns certainly uh although blair has spent leia mm -hmm. you know but i mean i guess red you, one you get to do it two times in a row right right red one blue uh sorry red two and red six are certainly set up for k-turns um Especially when you're on a rock like, yeah. like Red Six is. Yeah, absolutely. You're already losing the action. <laughs> might, as, well, might as well, right? It's yeah. it's practically free. It's like 50% of the negative is gone. Exactly. Right? You're, you're just going to get a stress and you don't have an action anyway. So I'm fully expecting you know Red Two to move in, in an interesting right, way. Here we go. Time, time to move some markers around. And so this is Blue Four. It's the Blue Four is coming first. He's doing a one bank into a bump. One bimp. Uh, losing the action, but hopefully being able to use the uh, the Dreo Renthal reroll. The crash, as we might say. I think both of these guys, uh, when I talk about like an efficient place to put your ships, they're both looking to just maximize arcs on their opponent. Right, absolutely. Interesting move Back here. Back up too. The two backwards from the five. Now that does block the 3k and maybe the 4k maybe, i think it probably gets the four as well yeah beep beep i'm a truck he's gonna parallel park and i think that that's a a really fun maneuver that i didn't consider i always forget these guys can go backwards all right so one banks does it fit looks and like it's in that means that tractor fits. beam is live I'm, I'm excited to see what he's gonna do here he's gonna track to be four Number or six four. track to be being four yeah that guarantees you two people gonna gonna be going over uh that rock in the center there mm-hmm as far back as possible, as far forward as possible. All right. Interesting. Okay, what do we have here? We have a one hard from six that may not clear. But if he can coordinate again with L3. That's um, right. That's He just has to have that arc pointed in the right direction because it's uh, required to be in the front arc. Ooh, does it fit? 
I think it might. We're in for a surprise, Dion. And not just a raffle. <laughs> surprise, a real surprise. All right. Oh, it could, it does it? Does it? Oh! They fit together, but I think I think it bumped into. Uh, no, he had William Trigger no. said no. So it is not going to be moving a heck of a lot. I'm mostly forward. Ah! Just put it wherever you want now. <laughs> Let the others double check it with where the quad jumper was. And then we're going to do uh, train tracks. Mm hmm. Choo choo. Don't park your truck on the train tracks, folks. But that still leaves him space to tractor beam red four, or sorry, red, red six. We're getting a little mixed up here. Yep. Red six is on the rock. Red six is on the rock. The four and six have now been swapped. Uh, you could. Fine. Sorry. I'm trying to help. <laughs> no, you you are. Thank you. There we go. So we got the bump from the U wing. And I think key for the U wing is it's out of arc, uh, preventing tractor beaming from. Um, blue six, mm -hmm. and then but blue six may still get a tractor beam off with the coordinate. There's the three K from red two. Yep, using the side method, it it works. So it's saying that it doesn't fit. Mm -hmm. Leading so to just, a bump. Just the bump there. So that backup two really doing some work there. The quad jumpers are fantastic little yeah. ships. And that means that that uh, red two is going to be out of the fight for a little bit since it's uh, red. It's stressed. Excuse me. Red and six here, taking a damage over the rock. So that's a second shield gone. That also, that looks like a 4K. There it is. Getting out of the quad jumpers arc, very important. Who are we moving now? Red one. Dion's got his concentrating face on. <laughs> there he goes. Keeping Too track of to the left. A nightmare. I subjected myself to this because I know people will want to see this game in the future <laughs> and, uh, and live. It, it's just, you know, having these many ships on the table is just fantastic. I love it. I'm in love. Trey going back. So with uh, with that move, I'm not sure it, he red one might end up with a shot on on L337 or maybe a good block in preventing that coordinate. Mm -hmm. I think it's a, it's a great position for the Z. You know, a hard two is probably on the rock, and then he's just putting his arc in a good place. He's near the U wing, uh, and there's three arcs sort of pointing in that direction that can shoot. Uh, L3 as she comes up. I'm curious to see what, what Red 4's dial is here in a minute because he might end up stuck on the rock. Here's uh, Red 5 moving up. Well, he saved him for last, which is interesting. Focus from Red 5 being very conservative. One forward. He is he's, stuck. He's going to be stuck on that rock. And does clear, it looks like. Does not run into... He's going to hit it next turn as well. Red 5. No damage. L3 avoids the block, but it's going to be range one in arc of red one. I imagine L3 will not coordinate. She might uh, focus, focus or calculate. Focus, yeah. Calculate. Yeah, that's just right. It's a droid ship. Calculate. Different than, uh, than focus. You can only change one eyeball result as opposed to as many as you have on the roll. L3 could also calculate or could also coordinate Drea to a barrel roll, and then she could do a green maneuver to clear it and do another action. Mm -hmm. um, or get an action onto Drea. Yeah, I think Drea might just end up doing the K-turn because you have the, she's kind of right in between those two rocks. You can see him considering the coordinate there. Mm -hmm. 
It's always polite to inform your opponent that you're looking at a dial that has not been revealed yet and letting them, uh, you know, be aware of what's going on, that you're touching your things. Yep. And he decides to go with the calculate. It's hard to, looking at Will, it's hard to see what he's thinking with that glorious big bushy beard. <laughs> it's all part of the game plan. And here is uh, blue four moving. Oh, sorry, Drea, Drea. Excuse me. Red one. Blue one. Oh, my God. It's like there's a lot of numbers out here or something. So it looks like Drea is going to have a hell of a shot there at red four. Yeah, because he does have that dorsal turret. He is tractor beamed. You can see that token right there. And this is why he was considering the, the coordinate, because Andrea attacks with focus target lock. This yeah, time. there you go. Well, unfortunately, it looks like she's just going to get the one action. She's looking at, he uh, Will right now is asking for uh, health updates on two, six, and one to see what his options are for next turn. I know you can't hear us, but uh, two is down a shield, six shields down, one Shield down. All right, and he decides to go ahead and target lock number four at range one. Dorsal turret does give you the uh, range bonus. Here you go, range one. One hit, has a target lock. Uh, gets the three. Uh, and all three of those are going through on red four. It's going to be down to one hole. And he's going over the rock again next turn. That's right, 50% chance of death. All right, so who's up next? So many ships here. It's L3. Nope, it's the Z95 turn. All right, here we go. All target focuses, lock. target lock. Into nothing. Blank city. Ouch. That Ouch. hurts. That hurts. That starts to put Blair a little bit behind. All right, range one. Got one. Calculate. Takes a calculate, no damage. Well, the dice have been in Blair's favor quite a bit this game. So That's right. Starting to swing a little bit towards William. All right. Looking at options. Looks like he pointed at blue seven. At range two to blue seven. That's the one that has one hole left. Good shot. Nothing. Nothing. Oof. Man, if, if that quad jumper lives another turn, it could still continue, continue just to give pain. Mm -hmm. It's a hard one to the left. Does fit next turn. Here we go. Blue four, trying to. Uh, Did no. red five shoot? No, no. sorry, he that that can't be what he's measuring. Yeah, there we go. There you go, red five. Range two on L three three seven. Yep. Even Blair got confused. We <laughs> measured from the wrong Z ninety five. No, no, no. That's your shit. Yeah, that one's yours. <laughs> They can't see our numbers, guys. Yeah. <laughs> they all look the same. Yep. And, like, some of them have orange... Like, both of them brought orange bases, too. All right, they're going to move red four out of the way to... Oops. I think they want to check if it's obstructed or not. Closest to closest. Yeah. That's close. There it is. Judge call. When you're in these uh, big, big tournaments and you have these situations, it's best to just call the judge, and and never be worried about calling a judge. Mm -mm. Like if call a judge more often than not. If you're ever in a position where you're like, I don't know what's going on, yep. Or if your opponent's telling you what something that you think is sketchy, right? Make sure you you just just call a judge, right? Like. As someone who's marshaled, and, and yeah. I, were you judging at the yeah. Gold Squadron Open? Absolutely. So, like, We're checking if it's obstructed or not right now. This is uh, Victor. Thank you for his work. Well, we can see now a little bit. He's tracking towards the edge. Just debating. Uh, what is Victor doing? He's just debating where closest to closest is. Where the closest to closest is, because it's not always just corner to corner. Yeah. And it looked like they determined that it was not obstructed. Yeah, that looks all right. Yeah, I, I would. That, that's what it looked like from our end, but you can never really tell with the with the camera angles. 
All right, here we go. Uh, one crit, spins focus. a focus. And both those are going through That's on L337. That's both shields. of her shields. Half, Down to two hole. Half points. They're going uh, range one into the U-wing. One hit, or sorry, two. And both of those are going in. That's two shields off the U-wing. You gotta do a lot of scrolling just to find the ships in your own. I know, it's <laughs> so, so many ships. Don't worry, we're all in this together. Keep your stick on the ice. <laughs> We'll get through it, Dion. We're doing only, it for only 20 more minutes. We're doing it for the people. That's right. Five looks like it's out of range, uh, shooting at red four. So we'll shoot at red six or red one. We'll have to see. This is blue five shooting, I believe. Yep, yep that's the quad jumper. One crit. Uh, Drea, Drea. Re -roll. Crit, Two crit. Crits. Looks like two eyeballs, and I think it's taken uh, off the oh. board. That went into, uh, was range three at red four off the board. Direct hit, structural damage, it's off the board. It had one One hole left, one it's hole. gone. All right, range one, got two hits. Uh, Reroll. Not, not sure which shot this is. Let's see where he takes it off of. Took it off right there, that's a shield down on. Uh, well, four just died, five. so that's got. Five, that's okay. number five. Oh, Keep track right. of this one while I do this. Okay, so that looks like... I think that's... One's going through on something, on the same one. Same one. So, is that one hole? This is... Um, I think that was four shooting that's at five. five, yep. And I think are we are we at die? <laughs> I'm not. I'm I not sure. So many things have happened. I think William gave go. a roundup of all his stuff, and and we're at dials. Alrighty. And like I said, you do the easiest when you're flying a swarm. You do the easiest moves first, right? Yep. He didn't count on being blocked. That's a really bad place for Red Two to be in. It's really out of the fight. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna take two turns for him to get. Maybe even three, depending on how how are much it moves towards the are bottom. Are we gonna of the get screen. to three rounds? That's debatable. Probably not. <laughs> so you got to figure it out, right? So he's got to do a green maneuver, then he's got a K turn, but then Leia's back up, but he can't reposition. So we're, uh, we're yep. going to be... So let, let's look at the score. Look at the score right now. William has scored 78 points. Mm -hmm. Blair has uh, scored 64. Those are actual numbers as neither of the, the ships with uh, Boba Fett or... Actually, sorry. Blair's actually down four or two more than what he actually is because Boba Fett, one, is still alive. Yes. So uh, that's minus minus two. Blair's actually only scored 62. Uh, yeah. But uh, unfortunately, our overlay can't or account for the free upgrades um, for this one tournament. So, What, Steven didn't change all of yet another squad builder just, so that, just for this tournament? No, I know, man. It's bad. What a jerk. <laughs> I, lo I love yet another squad builder. <laughs> I love it so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Steven. Ray for Rathios, for those of you who... Yeah. Oh, and you've got your initiative marker working. Yeah, it came up. That's good. It wasn't working earlier. <laughs> oh, I thought you knew. <laughs> no, that's good. I, I was like, I was like, well, we'll see what happens. Right. So, like, when you're doing a swarm, right, you have to triage your decision-making tree, right? Mm -hmm. So you do the easiest stuff first, and work your way up to the hardest stuff because once you sort of like know where all of the easy decisions are, right? Right. It's process of elimination. Absolutely. Right, that helps make your tougher decisions easier as you. Be okay, like oh well, this is gonna be blocked. And he's doing this, and that's gonna be blocked. So I have I, like that tough ship that I don't know what to do with. Well, it sort of has to go here. And right. You can sort of well, let's let's try let's try to figure some of those out. Yeah. Oh, I don't so, even want to try. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's do a little. We can kind of look at health and see what are some things that. Um, I just want to double check something. Yeah, he did get taken off the table. Get that that out of there. So we'll, we'll go we'll go one ship at a time. Kind of okay. go go in order. Okay. Um, Red one. Red, red one. Red, red one is in the middle of the board. He's going to follow L337. He's probably going to K-turn. Um, he's got a killer, but he's moving before L3, so right. he's going to bump. Right. Yeah, maybe the, four, the 4K might get over, but it depends on whether or not he'd hit that rock right in front of him, depending uh, on the angle. It's close. It's very close. But, uh, but yeah. 
we look at red two. Red two is the one that's out of position. He's going to have to clear the stress. Probably with a two forward is probably the best thing to get over. With, um, uh, well, with or does two? he have? Yeah, or does he? Are the what banks are are green on on these now? The twos. The twos. I think. Maybe that's the. It's such a such a tough toy choice. In order to get try to get reengaged. Uh, red three is gone. Red four is gone. Red five. Uh, he's he's got to follow L three and get it off the board. And and he, that's that one only has one hole left. So um, it will get an opportunity to shoot before the other the Jakus or the pirates, but Unless not before Drea or not before Drea. Unless it's pilots go killed by Drea. Right. Now, yeah. We're going through. And then six, red six, right here is full. Or I'm sorry, has only two hole left. And uh, it's kind of in the middle of the board. I imagine two green banks, it's going to follow L3 or Drea, try yep. to get half health or, or damage onto one of those more quad, expensive The quad ships. jumpers. Try to take the quad jump. That uh, blue seven is yeah. hurt. There's only one hole left. Going through. Uh, Williams, blue one, that's Drea. Oh, here we go. Well, let, let's find out. We don't have to guess anymore. Right. <laughs> no, All right, I think here we go. Blue seven. Let's find out what the uh, maneuver is. You see I a think blue six is going to track to beam Drea. I'm going to make that call. Okay. That's oh, here we go. Hard one. I love the hard one. That's a great maneuver. And I don't think he's going to be on the rock. That fits. That means tractor beam's coming in. Tractor beam under number but, one. But does it fit to the left getting it on the rock? I don't think it does. I didn't think that one cleared. But uh, he may be blocking uh, the barrel roll from red one to put him onto the rock. And it is only range one, right? Mm, it's range it one. So does that reach, for instance, red six? I think it might be just outside of range one. He's dropping the focus instead of tractor oh, beaming. Good. Okay. He's protecting. Um, oh, we're seeing a sloop, a sloop here. And both of those quad jumpers, blue six and blue seven, who have now swapped places, yep, um, are both low on hull. Um, I'm hoping to see a rotate here from the U wing. Um, and a, a three here we go. forward. That'll be a three forward from uh, from blue five. Oh, a two forward. My apologies. Yeah, sorry. That was end to end. Okay. Uh, and. We may see another. We may see a tractor beam here on uh, red six. He, he he pulled out the token. He's debating. All right, he, he calls it on Sees red five. He can oh. get that on that that rock for sure. Absolutely, and that rock five. has been has been just hell for Blair. Red five is uh has, uh, is on one hull. That's a fifty percent chance of That's killing. That's right. Him. Getting him off the board. I would call a judge in this situation. I think that angle is pretty rough, but that might just be the uh, the camera yeah. angle. Blair knows that. He knows. Uh, yep. Yeah, they gotta check. They gotta check the the range in arc. They're getting a judge. All right, here we go. So this is checking range from blue five, blue five to red five. Is it in arc? It in very, range in arc. That does matter. It was a very careful tippy tap there by the judge, and it is up well out of arc. Sorry, Will. But he's still able to track to beam six or one mm -hmm. reds. He's checking his options. Yeah. This is good practice too, holding down the base with the uh, the template you've used to measure. Yep. And then uh, getting your sticky fingers off of it. Yeah, because so all of our fingers get uh, sweat. It's little weird. oil. Yeah, exactly. It takes very little bit of, especially if you don't have anything, uh, any type of like grippies on the bottom of your base. If you just yeah. have the plastic, those come up super easily. Yeah. So, good question from chat. Does that count as a failed action if he has a target? I don't believe so. No, this because gets, you have you get to check everything yeah. at range one. Yeah, so he does have other valid targets. Yeah. Now he's going to check to see if six is an arc. It looks. The judge is still nearby. Maybe they should uh, get the uh, get the judge on board. Excuse me. Uh, looks like they've both agreed that he could track to beam six. All right. Probably won't move him. That's what I'm. That's what I'm guessing. Mm. Okay, he's deciding to to barrel roll him out. Changes his trajectory a little bit. It's going to help protect L3. Mm -hmm. Blue four. So we didn't get the Drea move. I really want to, she may just be going straight over a mm -hmm. rock. The hard two might also be in play. 
You just you just live it. You're just like, you know what? I'll accept the rock, get my chance to PS kill, roll for some natties. Red four in the scrum. Here's getting all three out of the way. And here we go. This is red one being ripped off the peg. <laughs> Hard to. Just uh, complete disregard for those poor, poor plastic Z's. <laughs> there we go. Get that on there. Beautiful. I should be saying Zeds to help confuse your 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 freedom viewers. <laughs> hey, those of you in the chat, where where are you guys watching from? All right, who's next? L three. Always just looking at L three style. And that's a very nice way of picking up the dial too. The way yeah, you, uh, two fingers. You always two, two, two fingers on the sides. You're not going to be rotating the dial, having a look at it. Or you pick it up with your thumb on the bottom. I'm going to ask you to stop picking your dials up. Yep. All right. This might get a block here. Maybe, maybe, maybe. From that tractor beam, the ship was moved earlier. Does it fit in the nubs? Uh, it doesn't look like it. Looks like no. it's overriding just a bit. So probably best to probably just put it on the end and use the slide forward method. But oh, it's a bumping. Bump, bump, yep. bump. Just grabbing that corner. Ooh. Someone just said they're watching from Algonquin Park, Dion. That's the Algonquin Park. Middle of rural Ontario. Budapest. It's impressive that they have uh, Wi Fi out there, is all I'm saying. <laughs> Hungary, Portugal, Africa, Australia. Uruguay. Paris. What time is it in oh Australia? Oh my goodness, Norway, Ger my kitchen, Germany, the moon. Somebody's on the moon. I don't believe that. Somebody, <laughs> somebody says they're at a reunion. It's fantastic. <laughs> Sitting there with your in-laws. Oh, we got a wing change. Wing dun, change. Dun, dun, dun. Getting a bump there. L3 has not moved out. Might be uh, out of trouble this round. Is reunion right now to, uh, the reunion island, maybe? Uh, could be. Bump with red five. Blair's got to get ships off the board this round. It looks like we're going to get crack shot coming up a bit. Yep. All right, so Blair choosing not to clear the stress, preferring the hard two. Probably next turn, he'll do that two bank barrel roll in. I'm thinking hard to again. He just wants to get that arc back and get the arc back, back in Absolutely. as fast as possible. Here comes Drea. This is going to be a close one. I'm Whether or not that hard two fits or not, let's take a look. Oh, it's almost like William Hagwood knows how to play the game. Uh, yes. Nope, but that's no, a that, that just barely clipped it. Here's a roll. Damn, no nah. damage. No consequences. Well, he doesn't get an action. There's, there's yeah, minor there, consequences. There's minor consequences. And we're going into red five. Nothing. Nothing. He was trying to get that PS Oof. kill. Or initiative kill, excuse me. Serbia, we got people. Lithuania, I we love got, it. I'm looking at Team Serbia right now, guys, in the cut. He's still at it. Uh, FYI, they're still battling. All right, gets an evade there. Crack shot. Crack we're shot. not sure who was shooting there. I was too busy upping Serbia. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, shoot. Yeah, no idea. Chad, if he caught that. We're playing, we are at the Fantasy Flight Game Center. All right, two hits. Oh, 
Okay. So we just lost blue seven there. Red six evades. All right, here's red six, range one, just at gets hit crit. No, sorry, this is the U-wing. U-wing at Drea, at, uh, at L3. L3, sorry. gets one evade. Uh, it's gonna be taking a crit, and the crit is? Hull breach. It's an all right crit if you only have one hull left. Yeah, correct. We won't even worry about it on the uh, on the overlay, you can, it doesn't both matter. Both these guys are rushing through this round. I'm sure we'll They're see. One more round. They want, they want one, one more round. So we're looking at, this is probably going to go into round five or six only. One hit. Gets through on the U-wing. Uh, bringing the U-Wing down closer to half. Yep, one one hole away from half. Quad jumper into the U-Wing. Three dice. This is, He needs this to be natural. That's two. That's going to get him half. That's going to get him more than half. Hit, hit, crit. Hit, crit into the U-Wing. That appears to also be hull breach. That matters because they're all face up now, right? Correct. Hull breach? Okay. It is a hole breach. Bringing Hagwood ahead right there, 104 yeah. to 80. Spends a focus for three. Trying to take that U-wing off the board. I think he just did it. Yeah. That, well, I think that was uh, blue four into red six. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yes, and it's off the board. I just swung decisively in William's direction. Red. Reroll. Uh, blue five into red five. They can't abide twins to live. They have the same number. Five. Red five's off the board. Hagwood just deleted several ships. No, I, that, that, that swung it huge in William's favor. Huge, absolutely huge. I don't so think there's a way one, for, for there's Blair one to round left. One round left. So let's let's try. They've jumped into dials. They get one more go. We're gonna have a stressed red two coming in. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have uh, that's gonna be that hard two you were talking about earlier yeah. for sure. Make sure he has an arc on target. Um, this turn is all about making like if, if I'm Blair, okay? Yeah. Um, he needs to score fifty points. Fifty points. So he's got to take down three ships. Now remember, uh, Blair with the blue squadron at half. Right, Leo Organa is, is, I believe, active this turn. Um, right. And she's also, he's down, William's down four points. Blair's down four points. Right, so, right, it's, so it's, it's actually 126 26 to 76. Right, so it, that's... Yeah, it's still, it's still the same. The differential is the same. Yeah. But Blair needs 50 plus points this round, so where's he going to get it? Right, he kills L3, kills Drea. He gets it, but Drea's still got eight chunky hull. Yeah, that that's that Y wing isn't going anywhere. The easiest thing to do is is pirate four. Two's gonna try and kill pirate four, and then he needs to kill L three with the the U wing, and that gets him close to the fifty he needs to bring it back to tying, and uh, he's got to get Jacku Gunrunner six off the board. So he needs like. He's got to kill. He's got to kill three ships or two very healthy ships. Yeah, and not lose anything. Yeah, which is going to be difficult with how damaged right, here we he go. is. And I think William's going to tractor beam red one onto a rock. Yeah, especially if that's in that's an arc. And so we've seen Leia has charged up and been popped he's again. Checking it here. Yeah, Leia's been popped. Is that in range? Call a judge. Victor's walking by. Time has been called. We were off by about 30 seconds. Kelvin. 
All right, so we're waiting here. So the way the tractor beam works, uh, it looks like it was, uh, could it was out, of out of arc. Yeah. But you have to choose something, including his own ships. He yeah. has to choose something, including his own ships. Blue 4 going to be uh, getting I, some here. And I can successfully report to all the Canadians out there that Kelvin Lau has defeated Jeremy Chambly and has made his way to the next round. The PTL continues. All right, so it looks like it was just out of range one. Here we go. Bump, bump, bump. Bumpity bump. Just getting things in arc. It looks like Williams uh, targeting that U-wing. I mean, trying to get him some, that's about 20-ish uh, points. That's easy. There. Right? Mm -hmm. The U-wing's going to go down pretty quick. And, uh... and is he going to try and track the beam again? Let's see. Do it. Nope, focus. Nope. Drop kill. the focus. Just Killing things is good. You can't kill one by putting it on a rock. It's got lots of hull. Yeah. Uh, and, and that may give it arc on Drea. You never know. Hard two again. He's going to have some range three shots down the field. He's going to try and kill four. He's going to try because and kill L3. Yeah, how did he get a focus? Because he, he was stressed. Yeah, Leia doesn't let you do... That's not how Leia works. They're having that discussion now. Yeah. Yeah. So misunderstanding on Blair's part. Yeah. He, got he it. was thinking the way I thought it yesterday that it just reduces your uh, difficulty of all your moves. But it does not. Right. It's only of red maneuvers. Correct. All right. So we're waiting for um, which ship is left. They're trying to do. They're trying to work on points. Like at this point, the round is over. Take your time. Yep. Don't rush. You know they'll hold the next round until everybody's done. You want you're not there's be, there's three games still going on, four games still going on. Like uh, don't rush, don't feel like you're rushed. Yeah. You know if you're in a tournament like this, take your time, take a deep breath. Like hang out, make sure you play right, make sure you read the cards, make sure you, you have the best game possible, right? Be your be your best self, right, Dion? That's every day, every day. Here's a 4K. And it's white. He popped Leia. He gets an uh, action. It looks like the U-wing stopped and focused because it's Leia, and, and that's how it works. So we're going to get bumping here, and I think we were doing the math for Blair. He's got to take three ships off the board yeah. and not lose anything to sort of get back in. And with Leia, he, may, he's, he's, he might get some key bumps in there. Here goes L33. It's taking away a shot there. I can't wait to hear about uh, Blair Bunky's, you know, recap of this on uh, on Scum and Villainy. On Scum and Villainy. That's gonna be great. <laughs> bump, bump, bump. Safest place for L3 to be is bumped into the Ewing. Yeah, just taking taking a shot away. It's always good. Bumping here his own ships. Drea doing no damage, but that's not her role, really. Her job is to live this turn. That's it. And I, I don't. There's no way that uh, that Blair can do that with what he uh, the ships he has available. I don't think we have anything left to move. Targa Drea's Targa locking the Ewing. That cleared. All right. All right, here we go. In the combat, range one, re-roll. I mean, two hits, and that's going to be two onto the blue. Ouch, 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 ouch. One ouch. hall left, and they're crits because this whole breach looks yeah. like there's a direct in there. It's going to be gone. You can see the frustration in the dealing of the cards. That's 155 scored uh, for William. Well, 151. I think that's the oh, nail. No, with, with that's got to be the nail. Eight. Then that's the nail in the coffin that's for the nail sure. Coffin. There's, I don't think you can surmount the the points needed at this point. How many times can I say point, point, point? Point, 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 point. point, point. Yeah, spends a focus for one. Two evades. Uh, no damage. There. That's game. And Blair right. Closet right there. Yeah. All right. What fan a fantastic, fantastic game. Fantastic game there. So just final game state here. William 
had, let's just double check this real quick. William has one dead Z95, L33 at half, and one dead quad jumper. Uh, and one other quad jumper at half, or no? No, that one's full, right? Because it's five hole? Uh, yes. So not half there. It's five never got touched. All right. Blue five was Great. shot. And then Blair lost the U wing and four Z95s. Toot toot. And still had two healthy Zs, right? Mm, yes, they, they were damaged, but not at half. Okay, great. And our actual ending score there would be William 155 minus 8. Yes. So All right, so that would be 147. Yep. And then Blair is 80 minus Boba Fett, which would be 76. 476. Okay. Fantastic. Let's go ahead. Get that out there. All right, guys. So we want to say thank you so much for uh, for watching this I round. Hey, oh, you did it! I can't believe it. Dude. All you those. Did you see that two bank block the K turns? That, the two it was, that was that was that it was, was crazy. Great. I called that he wasn't doing the four. He was doing the three. All right. I think he might have blocked the four too. Maybe. Yeah. It would just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> that was pumped. fantastic. Great game, man. That was the move of the day. Yeah. Kept that that Z just never came back. Yeah. I'm confused, guys. This is. <laughs> did you import the wrong one? I sure did. The tugs were extremely clutch in this game. Oh, I know what happened. I'll just hold on one second, guys. Oh, that's not right. Whatever. We're not, we're not going to worry about it right now. We'll just hide that. It never happened. Hey, right, guys. So, the great, absolute great game. Um, I mean, we had 14 ships on the table. A bunch of ships died. And I know that round that's count was, was low, right? was low. But with the amount of ships on the table, that was just to, that was to be expected, right? Yep. Like, there's um, well played by both players. Essentially, this was going to come down to once they got in the scrum, one or two decisions was really going to swing it. And I think um, Will blocking that Z95 and making sure it didn't have shots for several turns because it, it was now stressed, had to turn around. Uh, I mean, just, it just took away a, a gun from Blair. You take away a crack shot. That one Z95 could have flipped the game. And not only that, Blair's, Blair wasn't shooting at Drea, and the way William kept her sort of always made shots like Blair could shoot Drea, but yep. he never had a lot of shots on Drea, and they were never kind of, they were never really good shots on Drea. Yeah. And the way he sort of kept her out of the fight, kept those re-rolls going in the bumps in the, in the scrum, and that's really what you wanted, what he needed to sort of keep pushing that damage through. Um, and really, whenever Blair rolled, Whenever Blair had a crack shot available, he rolled poorly. Yes. Um, and uh, it was, they just didn't have enough rounds to mitigate some of the dice variants in, that we saw. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was great. I want to thank you guys all for joining us. We're going to be here all day, all the way up until the top four. We'll be, we'll be streaming the top four. Um, we're going to try to figure out something for the final. What we're not allowed to do. Um, by the request of FFG was not to put a camera on the final. So we can't do that, but uh, I have a couple of ideas how we could at least record our commentary and upload it later. I brought a portable recorder with us. Ooh. So we, we might be able to get you guys something. Maybe you guys, I, I, I we'll still- record, We could record the crowd. Record the crowd, or we could, we could, you know, we could still see, we could see their screens from back here. We stand, we kind of sit back there. We have our portable recorder. Yeah. We might be able, not be able to stream it, but we'll, we'll, we'll get something. Yeah. We'll get something, some content out there for sure. And I know we kind of rushed into this game. We only didn't have that much time to set up this 14 uh, ship match. But thank you to our patrons, our largest group of people. We got a bunch of people who signed up yesterday. Thank you guys so much. We hit our goal. We're going overseas, and uh, this week we're going to figure out how to, how to choose where I'm going to be going. And uh, so that's going to be tons of fun. Thank you to our subscribers and our moderators in the chat. You guys, thank you for your work. You guys are fantastic. Starting next round, we're going to be starting our giveaways. We're going to be giving away uh, more card sets. We're going to be giving away a very highly coveted large damage deck. I know some of you all didn't get one of these, and I got one to give away. So we're going to get that done. 
Uh, we'll be back with that and more in probably around 10-ish minutes from now. Looks like everyone's cleaned up now. All right, fantastic. 10, 15 minutes. So we'll see you in a little bit. I'm Dion. He's Devin. Gold Squadron. Be right back. We're not out. We'll be right back.